Hi guys, welcome back to class. Um, and it's been quite a while since we've had it, uh, and I wanted to send you this uh, video to help catch up on some of the stuff that we left off on. Um, you know, it's not ideal, and this is my first video, so please expect the uh, quality be terrible and uh, you know if it's a little bit awkward uh, please give me some space to uh, refine my process here but I think I figured out a way to um, communicate pretty well with you and uh, we can go over some of the material that we uh, need to figure out before the course ends um, anyway it's nice to see you all I mean I guess I can't see you you can see me because it's a video but um, in any event I wanted to start off with a conversation about the foot, um, how to draw the foot, how to think about the foot, and some of the anatomy of the foot. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to uh, the foot handout and some of the uh, another f couple files that I have that I want to show you uh, to clarify some of the issues around around drawing the foot, especially some of the um, more common mistakes that people make uh, when drawing feet. So um, I'll go ahead and switch over to that and I can draw on the screen and you can follow along with me and make sketch notes. Uh, and I'll see you there. Okay guys, so here we are looking at um, two anatomical drawings of the bone structure of the foot and the hand. And I wanna start off by comparing the foot to the hand. I think they're, they're really quite similar and um, I'll show you what I mean. So if we talk about the foot from basically this point here, like that, and then coming up this way, so this part of the foot, um, that I think looks really similar to uh, the hand, right? So we have our phalanges, right? Our phalanges in the fingers. So we have these kind of finger bones here. One, two, three and here we have one two three so once we get back there we get to what we think of as the wrist right and the wrist has a bunch of bones here and the foot also has a bunch of bones here now that's not what we think of as the ankle because the ankle we actually think of as the um the uh bones that come out of the tibia and fibula um, but one of the major differences that I want to point out is that um, the foot, you know, if we draw this little diagram here like that, right, like we just drew right here, um, there's another piece that comes out that the hand doesn't have, and it's this bone right here. And this bone, oops, that's not a good arrow, this bone is called the calcaneus, so C-A-L, cane like that. So the calcaneus is what we think of as the heel bone, right? The heel bone. And that is really important because we, uh, it's what stabilizes us front to back. And if we take a look at um, a comparison of the hand and the feet together, now these, this past image here, this is from Peck's uh, Atlas of Human Anatomy for the Artist. Um, this image here is from Richet's uh, Anatomy for the Artist book. Um, and it does a good job of showing you how the bones sit inside of the forms of the hand and the feet. And you can see here that the, um, that the wrist here, right, this area right here, um, the bone of the arm comes right up to the back of it, whereas that same bone that we think of for the ankle here, um, really there's a lot of distance between uh, the, um, the edge, the contour of the leg, and uh, what we think of as the ankle. So let's just, let me just see if I can zoom into that there for you. Um, yep, so, and if we just get rid of that let's see uh, okay yeah so you can see that there's a, a ton of space here between sorry between the ankle here and uh, the edge of the contour here right and then here in the front so there's very little space here if this is the uh, wrist there 
Um, there's very little space there, just enough room for the tenons and stuff like that. Now, of course, in the foot, we have the Achilles tendon here, right, attaching to the calcaneus. Um, and we have a bunch of other muscles up here that we can talk about some other time. Um, but this is a really important point, right? This point about the, uh, the ankle and the calcaneus and its relationship. So, um, you know, if we come into a view like, uh, not like that, like this, sorry. Um, if we come into a, a, a photo view like this, um, you can see the difference. Sorry, let me just bring you up there. Um, you can see the difference between the hands and the feet, right? We see the ankle here, right? And here, well, there's some, uh, there's some bracelets there, but we can think of the same idea in the hand there. Um, but you can see all that space here, right? And you can see the Achilles tendon back here, kind of shaped like that. Um, you can see the tendons in the front running this way, the creasing here. Um, and you can imagine that kind of shape uh, again here like that and then the calcaneus here like that so there's a really big difference there um, so the next thing i want to talk about is how to think about the relationship of these shapes this shape and this shape and this shape and this shape so uh sorry the relationship of those two shapes and how they interact with the ankle. So we're gonna go ahead and jump over to the foot pamphlet that I gave to you. Uh, so give me a second while I jump to that. Okay, so here we are at one of the pages of our handouts. And uh, this section is from Michael Hampton's uh, figure drawing design and invention book. Um, and it's a really good diagrammatical book. It's not an anatomy book exactly, um, but it's a really good way of, of uh, researching. It's got all these good diagrams to, to kind of show you how to represent the structure of things in space. Um, it was really helpful for me when I was learning to draw. And um, the thing I want to draw your attention to is this uh, diagram right here and this diagram right here. Um, and what it does a really good job of is creating a kind of example for you about how it is that the structure of the foot interacts with the structure of the ankle. And um, it doesn't do it exactly right here in this drawing, but I think um, generally people kind of relate uh, the structure to is something like a, like a wrench, right? So they kind of draw it like this. And they think of the ankles as being a kind of wrench that um, the structure of the foot is inserted into oops, like this. And then like that. Right, this being the calcaneus and this being the, the top of the foot. And then of course the toes would be sort of out here like that. So by inserting this up into that with a kind of um, hinge joint, right? Something like that. Um, what we get the sense is that um, the ankle comes down around like this and that the foot kind of pivots back and forth along this track. And so that's able to rotate forward and backwards. And if you, you know, hold on to your foot and you really pay attention to what kind of movement is happening right there at the ankle, um, it's not much, it's not a whole lot more except for this going down at, and this going up or vice versa, this going down and the other side going up. Uh, so that kind of idea, that kind of um, mechanical drawing there, I think is really important. Um, I really like the idea that we get to look at um, the idea of the foot coming out of, out of the ankle like that. like 
like this. Right, something like that. And whenever I, uh, whenever I'm drawing the foot, I always visualize it a, a, a lot. Like uh, Michael Hampton's going to start talking about this, and a couple other people talk about it, um, almost like a doorstop shape, like that. And I really like that too. That's a great way to kind of visualize the the top of the foot there. Um, but I, I also like to think about it as like a like a, a, a very simple sort of spring mechanism like this um, that was is kind of like spring loaded if you if you if you will um, and then the, the kind of platform of the foot looking like that right so that when a pressure is applied down here like that, then these shapes here and here will compress, right? And that's basically what your foot does, right? Is when you land, when you're performing some jumping, jumping or running exercise, the arches of your feet uh, compress uh, and absorb the shock. So I really like to visualize that. That's like my, my the best way that I can figure out to visualize setting up a foot. Um, so let's take a look at some examples and, and try to figure out how we can put this into practice. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, some photographs of feet uh, that could maybe help us understand how it is that uh, we can visualize. Um, now, the first thing I want to do is just draw a little diagram here. Uh, and kind of show that that wrench shape a little bit and I want to make sure that we're expressing in this wrench shape the fact that the uh, inside because I'm drawing this foot right here so the inside ankle uh, its high point is quite a bit higher than the outside ankle is so I'm gonna make sure that I express this in my diagram um, and then I'm going to try to get myself uh, a sense of the foot. Now, what I want you to notice is that the foot from this front view uh, tapers very little here, right? So it's kind of mostly almost like a block like this. Right, something like that, where it really tapers more on this side than it does on this side. <clears throat> and it's the same thing for the foot opposite, right? You can see that the foot opposite is like this, and that it really flares out even a little bit more on that one because it's a little bit more in the three-quarter view and you can actually see a little bit of the heel there, um, but it's looking a little bit more almost like that, right? Actually, this wants to come down even a little bit flatter, and then you get the toe there like that. So if we move down to a slightly, so all I'm doing here is moving the camera up, um, we get the same view of the foot, except for we notice that the proportion now is a little bit more um, the, and, and this will become more important when we talk about placing the figure with feet uh, later. Um, the proportion of this overall area from here down into the overall foot, that shape changes quite a bit, right? And so here it's like almost a, um, if we go up to here, and let's just change on our picker, um, you know, this shape here is like almost a square, right? It's like almost a square. Um, if we come down a little bit, we're gonna notice a much more rectangular shape, right? Something that's much more like a, upright rectangle. And as we continue, um, 
into higher and higher views, you're going to see that that obviously continues. Now, this is something that a lot of students struggle with um, in representing the feet uh, because they tend to represent them as these big kind of flippers like this, um, especially when uh, when they're drawing a kind of regular view figure, like as if, you know, those especially if the figure's on the model stand, right? Because on the model stand, they're raised up a little bit, so the feet are closer to your eye level anyway. Um, so there's no way that this amount of top view is going to really happen with a figure on the model stand unless their feet are hanging off or unless you're really, really close to them, right? So um, this kind of foreshortened view up here, right, this view right here is really foreshortened. Right? And, and it's one of the more common views of feet. Uh, it's a little bit harder to draw because of all the foreshortening. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to do that. Um, here we can see the foot, you know, kind of we get the full on uh, kind of view of its top down shape. Right, something like, like that, right? And then as we come all the way, almost looking straight down at the feet, um, we notice that again, we have that same wrench shape, but that the shape that's coming out of it, its proportion is just really, really, really different. Um, and it still has that flare out to the side, right? But just the length from, you know, from, from ankle to bottom of the foot is just tremendously different compared to the width. And we can see that with um, you know, any kind of angle of the foot. So here is like three quarter view, right? And then our camera is gonna slowly come down to being more level, right? So here we're gonna see a more foreshortened view. And then here we'll see the most foreshortened view there. Now, this is going to be probably the toughest to draw because there's the most foreshortening and overlaps. Um, but it also makes it one of the more interesting angles to draw. So here's the side view of the foot. Right? And then that's going to raise up a little bit and we're going to see it from the top down. And you can really see here the um, the evidence of the ankle here, right, as it wraps itself around the foot and then the foot kind of coming out of that there. Um, so it's always really useful, I think, to, especially in a view like this, always be thinking of that other ankle and thinking of, well, how can I draw the other side? Um, so if we get, you know, the foot kind of coming out here like that, right? Um, then we just get this little peek around, right? Let's just do that in, in yellow. We get this little peek around right there, right? Just that little sense of intersection and overlap that gets this thing here running right up and into that kind of wrench socket. And I think that can be really nice. I think that can be a really great way to sort of, uh, sort of start off a drawing and get that kind of diagram in there um, so that you have the structure to work with. So let's look at some artistic examples from uh, a slideshow that I put together. Um, this is from the Russian Academy. Uh, and you can see here just really great structure uh, around the ankles. Um, into the kind of top of the foot. Um, you can see the way the flat of the foot just really comes from behind the arc, that kind of uh, door stop shape down, that ramp down into the toes. Um, really, really beautifully articulated stuff here. Really diagrammatical, even though it's quite artistic, has lots of line work, lots of energy to it, um, lots of value rendering. All that value rendering is there to support the diagram, right? So you can see here, um, you can see even like little sketches at the bottom, right? At the bottom right, you can see those diagrammatical sketches from a completely different time and a totally different uh, kind of culture. Um, you know, uh, when they made these drawings, I, I don't think Michael Hampton's book was out yet. 
Um, I'm not sure what the date is on this drawing. I mean, it could be quite old or it can be quite recent, but um, either way, I don't think it's, uh, it's from when those uh, books came around. So those ideas are, are, are kind of a bit ageless anyway, you know. But if you look at the, at the top, um, you can see a little diagram. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Yep, so right, right there at the top, you can see a little uh, diagram of the foot showing that ramp down, really, really beautifully done. Um, and then at the bottom here, you can see other little diagrams that help show the way in which uh, you know, they, they want their value structure and their line work and all that kind of stuff to support. Um, the, 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 the kind of volumetric drawing that that diagramming supports. Um, so let's get this back into size here. So here we're looking at some Bouguereau uh, and, um, you know, famous for his beautiful uh, hands and feet. Um, and again, you can see in the subtleties of the paintwork um, just the insertion of that kind of mechanism of the foot and the ramp down into the toes into the ankles. Um, so it really looks like it does hinge there. Um, and it's really effective, I think. Here's some more Bouguereau. Um, and again, like you can just see the whole mechanism here. You can see everything working like it's a tool. Um, here I just wanted to show you some examples of, uh, you know, comic book artists and how they use this because comic book artists tend to really, uh, you know, draw quite quickly. They have to draw fast. Um, they have to use a lot of like notation to get their, their, their uh, their intentions across. Um, so in terms of the feet, uh, you know, this is John Romita Jr. from uh, the, the comic book series Kick-Ass, which was made into a movie later. And you can see the feet here, like in both of these shots, the, the, especially the one on the right, um, the eye level is meant to be quite low, right? So we're, we're kind of like down on the ground looking right at her feet. And you can see how well foreshortened that anatomical right foot is in that shoe. Um, even to the point where you can see under the sort of sole of the shoe there with a little bit of shadow at the bottom. Um, if you go over to the image on the left, we're a little bit higher up, but we're still looking up at them, which means that we're down close to the feet, which is essential for that kind of like heroic uh, low vantage point perspective. Um, so, you know, if you, if you really, really drop the feet down in that big kind of flipper shape, you, you can ruin that effect if you're not able to foreshorten the, the foot there. And, John Romita Jr. does that quite nicely. Um, so here's an example. This guy I, I like a lot. His name is Ryan Otley. He, he has been drawing a comic called Invincible for quite a while. Um, although I haven't followed it in a couple of years. I don't know if it's still going or not, but um, I have a bunch of the books. I've always really admired his drawings. And on the left there, you can see one of the characters and you can just see like really the beautiful gesture and the, the, the difference between the ankles and the insertion of the ankle form into the bridge of the foot down into the toes and how he kind of separates that with just a few line work strategies. Um, but I really want to show you this because on the right, and this is what you know kind of refers back to um, uh, the previous conversation with the photographs, um, you're looking at three characters. There's the guy in the middle who's invincible. There's the guy on the right with the big O in his chest and the, the Savage Dragon character on the left. Um, and if you look at the Savage Dragon character's uh, anatomical right foot, um, you can see that, that that foot doesn't really appear to be on the ground very well. It almost looks like he's planted that foot on the ball of his toes and sort of lifted his heel up, um, which I don't think that the rest of the uh, gesture suggests. Now, l listen, this is a, a, you know, one page in a, in a great comic that really flows and is really fluid. And as you're flipping through it, um, this amount of attention to detail isn't really appropriate for this kind of comic work. You know, the, the, the story flows perfectly. The, the drawing is, is perfectly effective. Um, but if you're just analyzing it in terms of like habits and stuff like that, um, you can see that the, the middle character's feet are much more sh foreshortened, right? And even the character's feet on the, on the right, the character with the O on his chest, um, you can see it looks as if his anatomical right foot is touching the ground, but the left foot is sort of lifted off the ground as if he's just flown in and is just landing on that right foot. But the character on the left, the dragon character, he doesn't fly, right? So, you know, there's no, there's no sense in that uh, foot being turned down like that. So that's an example of how, you know, if you make that foreshortening mistake, it can really undo, especially if you're talking about like a single drawing or a single painting or something like that, where somebody's gonna look at it for a little bit longer. 
um, that kind of proportional relationship of where the ankles are to where the foot falls, uh, that's such a big difference there, right? And it really supports or undoes the perspective relationship to the ground that you're building. Here's some paintings by uh, Nicholas, Nicholas Uribe. I love Nick Uribe's work. I've loved it for a long time. And here again, you can see in really exquisite detail how he uses really, really subtle value shifts and, and, and hue shifts to um, show the kind of mechanism of the foot. Uh, you know, really, really subtle stuff here and really great volumetric painting. Um, it, this stuff is, is, is so beautiful. I'm always really, really in awe of Nick's painting prowess. And here's some more feet. And uh, here's some drawings from when Nicholas was a, a student at the School of Visual Arts. Um, and I've always really, really admired uh, how simple and how um, descriptive these drawings are. Um, and these are just from a figure drawing class or something like that uh, that he took at the time. Um, not sure how long he spent on each one of these, but um, you know, you can see they're not rendered or anything like that, but you can see the volumes and the directions and the orientation and the perspective that he's putting into each drawing so clearly. Um, and, and sometimes he's doing that with intersections and overlaps, sometimes like on the image on the right, uh, that anatomical left leg, like you, you, there's really no intersection and overlap there and that kind of contour trace that he's done. Uh, but the overall sensitivity to the form and to the proportion of the thing is so, so, so exquisite um, that you really get a sense for the entirety of the form. Um, here's some more, uh, and I just love these kind of abbreviated, especially that shoe all the way on the left, um, how just simple that one, two, uh, line work strategy is to describe the bottom of that foot and you know the line is not even there to describe the top but you can completely see it um, really really beautiful stuff so anyway there's some artists for you to look at that uh, have done some footwork too